Well, with another weekly rotation down, this week was strictly Yves Saint Laurent YSL fragrances, and just so happens the majority of the fragrances I have from them are blue fragrances. While most of the Lana Wheat de Lome line and Lome fragrances that I have didn't show up on here, a few select ones did. And it's that time of the week. It's week number 80 in my weekly rotation. So stay tuned. Starting off on Sunday is one that I've been talking about quite a bit lately. It's been featured in a few videos. I did a full review on it. It is Why Live Eau de Toilette Intense. I'm just head over heels for this fragrance. Um, really digging the entire line. I mean, oh, so good. All of the, the Y fragrances that I currently have are in this video because I did wear them all this past week and I'm just digging it. I know I'm late to the party. I had a decant of the EDP for a long time. I uh, had 10 ml. took me a little while to go through it, but I did go through it. I did a full review on it beginning of last this past winter. But this is just such a happy medium between the EDT and the EDP. It's got some similarities to Invictus with that bubblegummy sweetness, but not so much bubblegum, to be completely honest with you. But it does have a strong similarity. But even though the note breakdown doesn't lend it, I still smell a lot of that green apple and ambergris that the Y DNA is known for um, while still being a massive sage bomb. Solid performer, above average in pretty much everything as far as quality of scent. Even though it's a little bit synthetic because it is a designer fragrance, it's still above average in scent quality in my opinion. Above average in longevity, above average in projection. Just an above average scent overall. And that was Y Live. And then when I got out the shower, it was time for a good shave, so I went with my Razorock Emperor Shave Soap and After Shave Splash. And because the scent strength is pretty weak on this, it fades about after 30, 45 minutes, it really fades away. I like to spray something Aventus with it. And in this case, I went with Black Walnut Legend from Banana Republic, one that I have not spent a lot of time with lately. Uh, just another Aventus type of smell. You know, there's a million and one of them at this point. But this one, because it doesn't perform super long lasting and super loud projection, it's kind of in that average to slightly below average range. It's perfect to pair with an aftershave like this when you really want to bring that scent profile to life. The fruity side of Aventus, if you will. And out the shower that night, I went with Razorock Emperor Shave Soap, Aftershave Splash, and Banana Republic Black Walnut Legend. Moving into Monday, sticking with the Y line, I've been spending some time with Y Eau Fraiche. So for being the Eau Fraiche flanker, it's actually not as fresh as the Eau de Toilette, believe it or not, for those of you that haven't tried it yet. But what this does offer that the others don't have is a gorgeous, warm lemon smell. This one's heavy on the lemon and a bit heavier on the ginger. And the way this ginger is done, it really accentuates the lemon heavily. It adds to that lemon smell because ginger can come off as kind of a warm lemon, almost spicy type of smell. That's exactly what I get out of this here. While still very fresh, very light, easy wear, it has a strong, warm kind of quality to it because of the way the ginger comes off. And it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. This one's not so heavy ambergris uh, sage bomb like the rest of them. This one's more focused on the lemon and ginger, I find, but a lovely fragrance nonetheless. I've really been enjoying the hell out of this one. This is a must own. I did try it last summer when it came out. I kind of put it off and procrastinated and said, yeah, I'll have it by next summer. Well, I definitely bought it before summer officially started this year, and I've really been enjoying it. That's why Eau Fraiche. And then when I got the shower, I typically go with pretty fresh stuff. I was just in the mood for something dark and I decided to grab my decant of the Siren, Curly Sense and Zaharoff collaboration for the Zed Creators collection that we are currently taking pre-orders on. I've worn this three times now. I usually do four to five sprays because you don't need a lot. It's quite potent, quite powerful. <sighs> Coffee, hazelnut, chocolatey leather smell, a little bit tad animalic leather too. It's 
beautiful. It's dark, it's warm, it's got some gourmand aspects to it. Lovely, lovely fragrance. Definitely much more masculine. This is one of those masculine fragrances I could see women wanting to wear because it sounds, it smells so delicious, but definitely much more masculine than you would think. Uh, lovely, lovely fragrance. Like I said, pre-orders are available for it right now. I don't even have a bottle. I have a decant, um, but I will be getting a bottle. Obviously, I'll have the entire collection. And uh, if you're interested in getting your hands on any of them, there's a link below that'll bring you to the landing page for my fragrance directly. But obviously, you can check out Brass and Soul, Justin's fragrance, and The Siren, which is Andrea's fragrance. But definitely check these out if they sound interesting to you. I'll shower that night. The Siren. Finally stepping away from the Y line. This is one of the ill-fated stepchildren of the La Nuit de Lome line. This is a flanker that didn't get the love it deserved, in my opinion. La Nuit de Lome, Eau Electrique. Yes, the new one is Blue Electrique, and it, they recycled the same bottle. Um, everybody's telling me left and right, I need to get it, I need to get it. It's a blue fragrance, you'll love it. I will get it eventually, it's just not at the in the top five of fragrances I want to buy next. But I will get it. I will get it at some point. And if you haven't tried Eau Electrique and you like Eros type of scents, if you will, I know that may sound kind of, oh man, for some of you, I get that. Uh, but this one's a little bit smoother, more refined, not quite as playful and youthful as Eros. The geranium lends itself to give you that minty quality. There is a strong vanilla here, but you do get a little bit of that powdery La Nuit de Lome DNA while not really getting a cardamom smell. It's definitely a bit more powdery and a little bit warmer than a Versace Eros. Like I said, that's why this one's a little bit more refined than going with actual Versace Eros. Very, very underrated. I was lucky enough to find this 100 ml bottle at a Marshall's back when I lived in Texas for 60 bucks, yeah, which is still a great price. It was a great price then, it's still a great price now because they're not even that cheap now. Um, so definitely if you can find this one for a good price and you like that style of fragrance but you want maybe a more polished version of it if you will, something that's a little warmer, a little bit more maturity to it uh, while not while really not taking away the playful side completely of that minty vanilla type of DNA, because this one doesn't have a whole bunch of apple and stuff going for it. It is slightly different, but it will walk you down the path of Versace Arrows for sure. But underrated gem right here. La Nuit de Lome Eau Electrique. Then we got the shower that night. Why I wanted this, I don't know. I haven't worn it in a very long time. I was just digging through my bottles, looking around, came across Alt, Farouche, which is their clone of Dior Sauvage, and I went with it. Still one of the best clones of Dior Sauvage, in my opinion. That opinion still holds true, because I did do a full review on this one the beginning of 2020, in like February, late January, early February, sometime around there in 2020, and I thought it was one of the best Dior Sauvage clones then. I think the same thing now. Uh, while not the biggest fan of the house, you know, I, I don't wear alt fragrances stuff all the time. This is definitely my favorite. I think this is very well done for a Dior Sauvage cologne. Clone. If you want a good clone of Dior Sauvage, they definitely make a good one. Very, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. Not as screechy and loud as Dior Sauvage, but more on the shower gel quality, if you will. It's... It's not that it's fresher, it's just not quite as sharp, I find. Just to me anyways. Out the shower that night, Alt Fragrances for Rouge. Moving into Wednesday, which I'll just say it, until further notice, it's my favorite YSL fragrance. It just is. It's the one I reach for the most. It's so versatile. I enjoy wearing it so much. It's YEDT. Yep, I love me some YEDT. I've had this fragrance for about a month roughly, and I think it's been in every rotation. I think. I think it maybe missed one week. And there's been weeks when I've worn it multiple times. I love this stuff. <sighs> Those aldehydes. But I'll tell you what, it's got a sparkling bright opening. Super, super fresh. The freshest in the line. Fresher than the Ofresh. While still not sacrificing a lot of performance in my opinion, 
six to eight hour fragrance, six, seven hours every time I wear it for sure, which I'm totally cool with, especially considering how light, fresh, and airy this is while still maintaining a pretty, a pretty robust projection. It's got some balls to it. It really does. This stuff really puts out because it's so bright and airy. Um, and it holds on my skin for a long time. It really does. Not the level of live, definitely not the level of the EDP, but performs actually as good, if not a little better than the Eau Fraiche. About what and what. But it's the most enjoyable for me. I love this one. It's my favorite in the line. And of all the YSL fragrances I have, which obviously all of them are not featured in this video, just the ones I wore for the week, but this is definitely my favorite YSL fragrance. If you haven't tried it yet, you're missing out. Y-E-D-T. Then when I got the shower, I just featured this one in a video the other day and I was in the mood for it. Tommy Bahama for men. Lovely, fruity, watermelon, aquatic type of scent. Rack store darling, if you will. They show up all the time at Nordstrom Rack. They pop up on a regular basis at Marshalls, places like that. Nothing special, nothing must have about this scent. It's just a nice, cheap, enjoyable, fruity, aquatic fragrance. You know, one that kind of gets swept under the rug and forgotten about is just some basic scent, which I'm not going to sit here and say it's not some basic scent. But if you're on a super high budget, you know, you can't spend a lot of money and you like fruity scents, super fresh stuff you can wear in the hottest of weather and you can go to town and damn near bathe in the stuff and you're not really going to offend anyone. This is really good for it. Not the shower that night, that's what I went with. Tommy Bahama for men. Moving into Thursday, I went right back to the well with Y Live. Yes, I could have picked a different fragrance and kept the variety going, but I've just really been digging this one a lot lately. So it made it twice in the rotation this week. Um, like I said, I've been talking about it a lot for a reason because I'm really, really enjoying it. This is the fragrance in the line I'm enjoying the most besides the Eau de Toilette. This is my second favorite because I have spent time with the EDP, so I can rank that. The Eau Fraiche is my least favorite. I haven't tried Le Parfum yet. Eau Fraiche is my least favorite, and it's still an incredible fragrance. So that should tell you just how much I'm enjoying this line and how high, highly I think of the line as a whole. But I can't get enough of this one. Maybe 60 ml was a bad move. It'll still take me forever and a day to go through this because I have so many. But if I keep going back to the well like this, I'll start putting a pretty good dent in this bottle but on Thursday I went back to it with Y Live and then when I got the shower that night this was in the same video as Tommy Bahama I decided to go with Dunhill Desire Blue another fruity aquatic that is super heavy on the fruitiness uh, very very enjoyable fragrance that doesn't get much love it's got its own set of flankers blue ocean and blue this and blue that but this is a great fragrance. Another rack store hidden gem darling of a fragrance that you can get for around 15 bucks for a 50 ml like this. Around 20 bucks if you can find a 100 milliliter bottle. I've never seen this in 100 milliliter at the rack stores. Regular Desire, the red bottle. That one, yes, I've seen a bunch of times. That's how I got it. But lychee, sea notes, fruity and aquatic. Super, super fruity and aquatic and fresh. Delightful compliment getter. I have gotten a few compliments the few times I have worn this to work in the past It's just a nice little gym out the shower that night Dunhill desire blue moving into Friday is a I believe it's discontinued. I've heard it a ton of times from a bunch of different people Can't confirm nor deny if it is it's sad I believe it is discontinued because it's such a damn good fragrance, especially if you like ginger Loam ultime one of the newest fragrances to my collection and a recent fragrance in that haul. While I had smelled it many times in the past, had sampled it, test sprays from different fragrance places, I just kept putting it off and procrastinating getting it. It's kind of a dusty rose, if you will, uh, slightly dry with this beautiful, almost creamy, ginger beautiful fragrance and i actually get really good performance out of it seven to eight hours easy of solid decent mild projection 
longevity. You know, I, it was an absolute pleasure to wear on this day. It's one that we'll be making the rotations a lot more. It's such a delight to wear this fragrance. It's enjoyable. The wife likes the way it smells. I didn't get any other compliments from it, but I'm sure eventually I will the more I wear it because it does project pretty well off of my skin. While not some big monstrosity beast, you know, 10 feet away you can smell me, but a few feet around me for several hours, it wafts. I could smell myself all day easily. Uh, the wife actually made two comments about it. One, when she first smelled it, and then a few hours in, she's like, ooh, I still smell it. This smells good. That stuff's really performing. She was right. It performs pretty well on my skin. Definitely not some weak sauce, but not really a beast either. Right in that sweet spot of performance that, you know, a past six hour range with, you know, very solid, slightly above average projection. The kind of stuff that I think is the sweet spot for a fragrance, especially for a designer fragrance. Why sell loam? Ultime. And then went out the shower that night. I was gun I was reaching for Nautica Classic, and right behind it is my vintage bottle. And I said, you know what? Let's give the vintage bottle some love. So on Friday and on Saturday, this is what I wore out the shower. Well, haven't it, I'm recording this during the day on Saturday, so I will be wearing this out the shower. Full disclosure. Haven't worn out the shower yet on Saturday, but tonight I will be. But the top note is spoiled. This is a 20 plus year old bottle. Believe it or not, my aftershave splash, not spoiled at all. Actually quite potent, to be honest with you. <laughs> like I get a good two hours of longevity out the scent on the aftershave splash. But this is much more floral than salty marine aquatic like the newer version is, and it performs way better, way better. Top note, like I said, a little sour, but after a solid minute, that's gone. You don't smell that anymore. It pretty much goes into the heart where the florals are. It's a little bit of a white floral smell. Very woody, still has a little bit of an aquatic appeal to it, but nothing wrong with getting a vintage bottle of this. If you can find one for 20 bucks range, worth it. Is the top note gonna be spoiled? Most likely, regardless of how it was stored. This isn't some super high quality oils that was a $250 bottle in its heyday. No. Top note spoiled on mine too. It was a perfectly sealed bottle when I first got it. But after about a solid minute, that's gone. That spoiled sour top note and the heart and dry down are there and it's gorgeous. Nostalgia all over again for me. So I have to shower on Friday and on Saturday night, vintage Nautica. Finally on Saturday, what I wore today that is still, still going pretty strong off of my chest if I'm being honest here. Why sell loam? Le Parfum. Had several people on my Center of the Day post ask me, what's the difference from the original to this? For me, this is just a richer version. Still smells like YSL Loam. Doesn't smell like much has changed. It's the colors fitting. It's a bluer, because I've always considered loam kind of a blue fragrance anyway. But this just smells like a denser version. It does perform better than current bottles of loam, for sure. That stuff is weak sauce these days. Still smells great, but it's like a four hour fragrance. That's pretty weak sauce. This, every bit of a seven to eight hour fragrance for me, just like with Ultime, and it's right in that sweet spot of average to slightly above average projection for several hours. It just, it performs well for me. It's rich, it's robust, it's full bodied, it smells of dense oils is what it smells like. And uh, it's a great version of Loam in my opinion. This day and age, I think this is the one to get, to be completely honest with you. Because from discounters, you'll spend about the same money on this as you will on the original Loam and this is hands down the better fragrance. I love when I wear this one, when I remember to pull it out, and since it was YSL week, it was a no-brainer that this was gonna make it in the rotation, and I saved it for this beautiful Saturday that we've had. YSL Loam, Le Parfum. And then once again, like I said, tonight out the shower, I will be wearing my vintage bottle of Nautica. Well guys, that was my rotation, and until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback. I love hearing from you guys. What did you wear this past week? You know, I love reading that in the comments. Make sure to sound off in the comments and let me know what your week looked like. What kind of variety did you have? Did you wear the same fragrance all week? That happens sometimes. I like to mix it up. Uh, definitely 
impromptu themed week. Once I started the week, I kind of just stuck with it and said, oh, I'm gonna just wear YSL fragrances this week. And here we go. I have uh, more flankers of loam. Well, only one other flanker of loam. And then I have other versions of Londo Wheat de Loam. So I do have a handful of other YSL fragrances that could have been sprinkled in here, but I've really been digging the Y line. I kind of really wanted to feature that and wear that this week. And uh, a few random ones aside from that. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the fragrances that I featured in this rotation video and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.